What's going on YouTube? Jason Whitaker, DIY Dad, back for another video and today we're going to be talking about some issues uh, that I think people have been seeing with their solar system. Uh, when I say solar, I mean solar powered system, uh, specifically dealing with a power home or also known as pink energy install uh, in the past year. Um, so uh, the first thing uh, that people need to know is if you want to maximize your solar energy potential for your home, uh, you should be net metering and what that is is um, you have to have a smart meter just like this <clears throat> and you uh, go into an agreement with your electric company and uh, during that agreement you uh, you and the electric company agree that uh, any energy that you overproduce for your home feeds back into the energy grid um, so that is net metering so um, different rates um, are for different locations, but for my specific location, it's dollar for dollar. So every dollar of energy that I, I generate uh, that goes back into the grid, um, I receive a dollar, and obviously for uh, the same rate that I use, um, uh, they charge me for it. Um, so first thing first, make sure that you are net metering. Um, I've seen a lot of uh, comments and complaints that they're not you know they're not meeting their solar energy expectations on their their panels um, so the first thing is to make sure you're net metering and this is uh, one of the first uh, things that um, I found when I thought that you know once I installed solar panels that you know I'd be creating all this energy well when you first install solar panels your solar panels are only produced the amount of energy that your home is currently using and no more because you're not able to back feed to the grid so make sure uh, that you are net metering um, so that way you can maximize your solar potential. All right, so the second thing uh, that I've been dealing with uh, this past year is um, something called uh, PV snaps or snap RSs. Um, they're created by the company Generac. Um, and what these do is they snap in between every solar panel. Uh, they eventually go to, so it's, uh, solar panel, snap link, solar panel, snap link, and for every solar panel you should have one snap link. Um, those snap links go to a PV link and those PV links, um, the, the, depending on the, how big your system is, those PV links then come down to your Generac inverter. So for my particular system I have 25 solar panels. So in essence I should have 25 snaps and um, of my, my PV links um, are broken down by I have one PV link that has seven and the other uh, three PV links have six according to the spec sheet. Uh, part of the problem that I've had this past year is that um, the PV snaps um, have been found to be defective by Generac. Um, so they did some sort of update or, or something um, at the beginning of the year and um, the PV snaps just stopped working. Um, they were defective, uh, they were not able to produce energy, and once a snap goes bad, it can take down your whole array. So, um, in, in my case, it took down all of my solar panels. All of my snaps went bad, I had to replace all of my snaps. So, um, the next thing you want to do is look and see if you have a snap link error, um, and that's pretty easy to find. Let me show you how to do that. So, this is my system, um, and the way you can read this real quick is uh, you see right here, uh, this is what my solar panel's uh, producing, and it's like 9 o'clock at night, so it's producing very little. Um, this is what my um, house is using, 2.63 kilowatts. So right now I have the air condition on, and I believe the dishwasher, so that's why you see that. Um, and then you'll see uh, electricity coming in from the grid, uh, if this wasn't here. Now this is what I wanted to show you. You see where it says, air detected PV link 2502. That is one of the first ways you know that you have an issue with one of your PV links and or something related to it such as a snap um, snap link uh, on your system. So another way you can do it is um, you go to your computer and you log into your PowerView uh, app on your computer, not your phone, your computer. Um, and then I'm, I'll show you how what it looks like on the dashboard. Um, you'll see um, a little area that indicates PV link and not making power. Um, when it's not making power, uh, obviously that whole solar array, for me it's six panels, is not producing power. So I've been dealing with these issues since uh, January, February. 
Um, and just like everything else during COVID pandemic era issues, um, you know, everything was back ordered. So um, I made the phone call at the beginning of February after discovering late January that there was something wrong with my system. Um, uh, Power Home, aka Peak Energy, came out to my house and um, they re replaced a, a bunch of, of snaps um, on three of my um, arrays, not my fourth. Um, so as of right now, um, so at the time they were all working when they left. Um, why they didn't fix the defective snaps that were already installed, uh, their, their comment to me was, well, your system's currently working. If it's working, we're not replacing them. Well, a couple days later, those failed. Um, and then I have to go uh, and get on the phone and call uh, Pink Energy, aka Power Home Solar, and say, hey, my system failed again. Um, this is getting very frustrating. Uh, so what they had to do is schedule another appointment. And obviously, that was another three to four weeks out because they were having to wait on um, more snaps to arrive. Um, so they came out, they replaced uh, the snaps on that fourth array and I'm thinking to myself that, you know what, at this point in time everything's going to be fixed, everything's going to be working, and everything's going to be great. Well, two days after that, failed again. So I called Power Home, aka Peak Energy again, uh, and said, hey, the same, the same PV link went down again, um, I think we have a different issue. Well, uh, when I was on the, the phone with tech support, tech support tells me that there may be a problem with the wiring. They would have to send another tech out in a couple weeks because uh, they were all booked up and they would have to come check the wiring and make sure that, you know, I don't have a nicked wire or something like that to cause uh, the, the, that particular array to fail. Well, when that technician came out, that technician didn't even go on my roof and to assess the wires. Uh, he simply did a, uh, a reset from the inverter and claimed that everything was fixed it was a programming issue um, and he left well he also explained to me that I only had three PV links on that particular or three snaps on that particular PV link uh, and I went and down the rabbit hole of looking at my spec sheet and I know for a fact that I have one PV link with seven and three with six so I called Generac themselves and I said this is the story that I'm getting from uh, Power Home, aka Pink Energy, and uh, can you validate the number of snaps that are currently on my inverter that you can see through my PV links? Um, they were generous enough to take the time and go through every single PV link uh, on my system, and they only discovered that there was uh, visible 21 um, snaps through my four PV links. I'm supposed to have 25, if you remember the first part of the video. So um, I called Power Home again, uh, aka Pink Energy, and uh, I, was, I was pretty upset. Uh, I seem to uh, feel like I, I know what I'm talking about when it comes to, when it comes to my system and know what, to, what questions to ask for. So that's partly the reason why I'm making this video. Um, and I described my frustration of one, the tech didn't come out and check the wiring like they were supposed to as advised by tech support. Um, two, that the PV links, uh, the number of PV, the, the snaps, not PV links, the number of snaps on my PV links were not accurate as a port, according to my spec sheet. Um, so those are some of the things that I want you to look out for. If you're having problems with your solar uh, creating energy from Power Home Solar or Pink Energy, um, look at your install. Um, I'm not quite happy as of right now with the, the way that the things are going with the techs that have been coming out to my house. Um, there, today is Monday, uh, June 13th. I'm supposed to be having a supervisor uh, from the technician department come out on Wednesday the 15th and he is going to make sure that everything was installed properly, make sure that all my snaps um, that are defective have been re uh, replaced. If a PV link has failed, he's going to replace that uh, PV link according to um, my, my tech support team, which you know, they, they tell you one thing, but sometimes when they come on the ground, they, they do something different. So um, let's see what happens. But if you're having issues producing power with your solar array, um, first things first, make sure that you're net metering. Net metering is very important. Um, if you can't net meter, um, all of your, your energy potential from your solar panels is not being used. 
Um, you need battery storage or something like that to store all that excess energy. I do not have battery storage. I am storing my excess energy on the grid. So uh, make sure you're net metered. If you are net metering and your solar panels are not producing uh, the way you thought they were going to, or um, that your solar system was producing very well and not producing as much anymore, um, go ahead and look at your inverter. Look and see if you have that error code. Um, log on to Power View and I'll show you that dashboard area again um, where it says clearly not making power. That means that PV link and that, that part of my array is down. So go ahead and discover those. That gives you more ammunition when you call tech support because all of our installation, all of our panels and the equipment is all warranted for 25 years and they're obligated to fix it. And not only are they obligated to fix it, uh, because I was so upset, I've been making Power Home pay for my, um, my solar loan um, for me. So they're cutting me checks monthly until my system is fully operational and I highly suggest that you guys do the exact same thing and demand that they pay for your system until your system is fully operational. Alright, if you have any questions, please leave those in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Um, I know this is kind of a complaint video. This is not really a complaint video. I'm trying to make sure that uh, those with the same system that I have know what to look for and know how to ask um, when know what to ask when they're talking to tech support and be a little bit more savvy when you're talking to them. But I'm Jason Whitaker, the DIY Dad. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.